right, Brandon, Ash, it has been a bit of time since Mario and Luigi Brothership was announced, and we haven't really checked in with our thoughts on what we, well, think of the game since that time. Obviously, we were all excited when it got announced. It was a surprise. In fact, I was wondering if Mario and Luigi would come back, but just as another remake. I did not expect another brand new game. It's been so long since that happened, and... Brothership, the more we look at it, I think we all came to the realization that as big Mario and Luigi fans, this is more of a callback than people might realize, or at least at the outset, because Mario and Luigi became a certain type of thing, really, as soon as the second game, and this is the first time it's gone back to what Superstar Saga established. And I, I find that fascinating in a way, just that uh, rest restart your ideas, restart, get a fresh start and see what worked about the first game and go from there. But obviously, let's get your opinions as well. Ash, let's start with you. How are you feeling after all this time about Mario and Luigi Brothership? I am honestly so incredibly excited, man. Like this was overall the thing at the direct that, that has me the most hyped. It's it's lo it's like neck and neck between this and Astrobot for my most anticipated game for the rest of the year. And, you know, I, I think it's easy to forget that, you know, not only has it been nine years since the last Mario and Luigi game, it's been even longer than that since the re last really good Mario and Luigi game. Yeah, and, you know, because Paper Jam was just so aggressively generic, and it and it took something that such that should have been such a slam dunk idea, which is mashing together Mario and Luigi and Paper Mario, and just somehow turned out just the most paper -thin again game. aggressively they generic paper thin experience you could you could have imagined for a game. They like chose that. the and wrong era. See, they pick the exact wrong moment to do that cross crossover right and then you know, you see this and you know i i think you know all of us here probably didn't we weren't sure if mario luigi was going to survive the death of alpha dream and thankfully it seems that it is but what's so cool about this is not not only are we going back to kind of as you suggested derek a, a, a bit to the more aesthetic style of the original game it's it's so fitting that we're doing so for you know for the series' console debut we're getting and i realize we're talking about the switch here and you can say it's all you want about it being old hardware but this is the first time it's been off a handheld only platform and and the animation quality we're seeing in the trailer like we're, we're getting so much closer to that old cool card old school cartoon visual style that we first saw in superstar saga and that, now we're finally on hardware that can really bring that animation more to life in that way that we saw on the box art all those years ago. Yeah, it's great to see uh, Mario and Luigi in 3D for the first time. Um, obviously, we got a little bit of 3D, like in Dream Team. Um, yeah. But the characters weren't 3D, just the environments were. Um, I, I'm really surprised at how well these character designs translate to 3D, because... You know, we've never seen them like this before. They're incredibly overly animated in a good way. Um, and I thought that might be hard to pull off in 3D, but they did it. It looks great. Um, the spirit of Mario and Luigi is there. We get that right in that opening cutscene where Luigi is running around the woods and Mario's <laughs> like, what the heck are you doing? Um, before they get shipped off to their next adventure. Uh, it's, uh, it's great to see, but the thing that stands out for me the most with this game, um, and we touched on this a little bit, is that there's no like prevailing gimmick or weirdo like gameplay mechanic that takes away from the traditional Mario & Luigi experience. Calling it traditional Mario & Luigi experience already is weird, because when you really break mm -hmm. it down, there's only one, <laughs> and that's the original game. Uh, yeah. Every mm -hmm. game after that has done something wildly different. With Partners in Time, you had four playable characters. With Bowser's Inside Story, the majority of the game you play as Bowser. Um, Dream Team is, in some ways, just a sequel to Bowser's Inside Story, uh, with the dream sequences playing very similarly to the inside of Bowser. Um, and then Paper Jam, you had three playable characters. And then we got two remakes. It's wild that it took this long to get just a... <laughs> I don't even want to call it bog standard, but like just actual regular sequel to mario and luigi <laughs> focused yeah exactly mm -hmm. yeah yeah it, and it can be argued that partners in time is basically the same as superstar saga it just 
you know, taken advantage of, oh, not only we have two screens, we have more buttons. So let's mm -hmm. add more characters, which not a terrible idea and keeps the basics there. But it's been a while since I've played uh, uh, Partners in Time, but it's also like that was a lot to keep track of. And the baby's only added so much. So, yeah, it's. It, it sort of followed the formula, but then they hit upon that winning, like, everybody loves Bowser's Inside Story. It's widely mm -hmm. considered the best in the series, so it makes sense that they continued that with Dream Team, which I thought was quite good as well. In fact, I, my, I, I held the opinion for a long time, and I still waffle back and forth about it. I think Mario & Luigi is a stronger, more consistent RPG series than Paper Mario. Paper Mario has higher highs, mm -hmm. But Mario and Luigi has a much better standard experience across all of its games until Paper Jam came along. <laughs> and, yeah. then the, and then the, the, like you had the great humor, great callbacks, the great animations, uh, still had the same great dodging and uh, counterattack gameplay. I, it just it had it hit a note for me that Paper Mario just didn't hit. When I went and played Thousand Year Door, I was like, this is really good, but it's I miss my Mario and Luigi. It wasn't quite the same until I kind of got into the aesthetics and the the mindset of Paper Mario and how significantly different the two series really are. But then Paper Mario went into the Super Paper Mario and then of course all the Sticker Star and so forth where it became more of an adventure game. So Mario and Luigi sort of held up as that bastion of like this is just consistent cozy experience with its own fun little gimmicks here and there. But now with the, the resurgence of all three, it's like, man, it's, it's really interesting comparing and contrasting what what each RPG series brings with for Mario. Well, you know, and that's that's so true, especially the comparing and contrasting, Derek, because, you know, I think it's obviously we all have our own individual opinions on both series. But, you know, I, I think it's probably safe to say that there are only two Paper Mario games that 99 percent of the fan base agrees that it loves. And then you get Super Paper Mario, which I think is great, but it's still very divisive. And then you go into the whole, yeah, Color Splash, Sicker Star thing, Origami King. But then with Mario Luigi, pretty much everybody likes the first four games. I know there are people out there who are gonna, who are gonna say one of those four sucks and that's fine. But generally I feel like the first four games are well liked and it's really only Paper Jam that it's almost universally agreed upon that it just kind of felt, you know, came up short, very generic. Um, and so, you know, I think that's what makes this doubly exciting, even more so, is that Mario Luigi has just historically been more consistent from entry to entry, which makes me a little bit more sure of what I think I'm getting with Brothership. And I say this as somebody who actually really liked the Origami King and is pretty happy with where Paper Mario is at right now. I'm looking forward to seeing where they go next after the, the Thousand Year Door remake. But like with Paper Mario, it still feels like you quite don't know what you're ever going to get from entry to entry. Whereas with, you know, Mario and Luigi, you know, yeah, they, they had a missed up with Paper Jam, but it was a one time thing. And I'm more than willing to give them the benefit of the doubt of the doubt still. Yeah, I think overall between the four like core Mario and Luigi games, there are more more faults that you could point to than even the two Paper Mario games. But I think Mario and Luigi gets an edge just, you know, for consistency. Um, for quantity, as weird as it is to say that, the fact that there are four games means that we got to spend more time developing those gameplay mechanics, seeing what we can do in those worlds with Mario and Luigi. Uh, is, is where Paper Mario has only gotten to upgrade itself realistically one time. Um, mm. So, you know, it's it's not even the most fair comparison, but I think it's a valid one. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and this, of course, is, is before, you know, and you were saying this uh, earlier, we don't know what the gimmick, if there is one, they haven't shown it yet. And, you know, with Bowser's and Hunt Story right out of the gate, it was like, oh, here's the whole Bowser thing. This is what sets this apart from the previous two games in the series. With Brothership, so far with the debut trailer, it just looks like a good time, rollicking adventure with Mario and Luigi with better visuals than we've ever had before. The same battle mechanics that we've known to, you know, grown to love throughout the series with the bros moves looking better than ever new characters in a new world like it just seems like a cool rollicking adventure in another mario and luigi game without some sort of specific hook and you know what if there isn't and i say hook i mean more the the hook for me is what we're already seeing i guess i need more gimmick yeah. and if there is no gimmick that sets this one apart 
personally, I'm kind of okay with that. I just want a damn good, a damn good adventure in the Mario Luigi style. And then, but you know, we are a few months out from launch still, so we could still get that overview trailer where it's like, oh, but wait, here's what sets this apart. You play as Cappy. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The one thing yeah, about I the. Mean... Oh, go ahead, Derek. Oh, uh, sorry. I, I've, I've seen it mentioned a few times in our live audience, uh, but I, I agree with them. It's the first thought I had. It's like the closest we've seen to a gimmick for Brothership is the island hopping. The fact that you go right. to different islands and there's a lot of ways they could play with that. They could go sort of like a Sh Shantae and the Pirates curse with it, where each island has its own sort of small uh, bit to explore. You get a new ability, which helps you with the next island or even go slightly Metroidvania-ish with it, where you get a new ability or brother uh, ability that allows you to go back to previous islands and unlock further things there and really sell that island hopping me mechanic. Or we are at a brother ship, they could go Wind Waker with it and actually sail between each of the islands in the brother ship and see what you do there and upgrade it as you go along. There is certainly a lot of ways they can carry the gimmick, but I don't think it's as all-encompassing as what we saw with Bowser's Inside Story or Dream Team. One, right. I one mean, thing oh. that I've noticed um, that I've seen people bring up is the fact that on the battle screen, there's the the outlet to the right of Mario and Luigi's uh, like HP and Bros points. Um, in previous games, we had like the badge system where every time you like did an attack one side of the badge would get closer until they meet in the middle and then you can use it for like a power-up or whatever. Um, so I think if there is some kind of prevailing gimmick, it'll be in the combat and it'll be whatever that system is. Um, and this is outside mm -hmm. of like, uh, you know, world design and travel and, and whatnot. Um, I, I think it's also worth noting that uh, the original Mario and Luigi is like the only one in the series where the bros attacks are just Mario and Luigi doing acrobatic stuff, which is mm -hmm. what I love. Mm -hmm. um, I love, I, I like the item based attacks that they started with Partners in Time and after, but they kept relying on them so much um, that it got a little stale for me. Like there's always a fire flower attack. There's always a shell kick attack. Right. Um, mm -hmm. Then you'd get some of the weird ones, especially in Dream Team that I, I really like. Um, but I think it's cool just to watch Mario and Luigi. Uh, there's one shot of Mario like charging his hammer and Luigi comes up behind him, hits his hammer to make it stronger. <laughs> um, they're jumping off of one another in their, in their normal attacks. When I assume they are just their normal attacks, which is awesome. It means that they're yeah. more involved in each other's move sets. And that means that the bros attacks can be those item, you know, based moves without uh, forgetting where we started. <laughs> letting the Mario Brothers yeah. be the Mario Brothers. It's also one of the things I very quickly noticed that also sort of signals a shift in maybe a back to basics approach. No Starlo. Starlo was sort of like the most consistent character across the series other than the core Mario cast. Um, like she made her appearance in Bowser's Inside Story and she stuck around all the way until Paper Jam. So the fact that she's not here is quite interesting. Um, whether or not she never appears, that's the, hard to say, but I don't think she'll be traveling with the brothers this time around, which, again, it's, it's I'm curious how far back they're going, what, what new ways they're going to take the Superstar Saga formula and, I guess, take it in a different direction. Well, and I guess that, you know, if they did have Starlo, which, I mean, and I, I personally really like Starlo, but I guess that might take too much away from the new partner character who's going to be kind of helping them out and, and trying to find them a way home. I can't remember her name at the at the moment, but it's like something like Connie, I think. Um, but that might have taken too much away from, how, you know, their new partner character, I suppose. Yeah, oh. and uh, I know people like Starlo. I'm one of the people that wanted Starlo ejected from our planet. Um, oh no! What? <laughs> I don't hate Starlo. I just got really what? tired of her. Like, uh huh. You know, I love how weird Stuffwell is in uh, in Mario and Luigi, and you know, there wasn't necessarily a a, a a travel character in the original game, but you had Toadsworth, you had Prince Peasley, um, mm. who showed up often enough that you could say that about them. 
Um, I was just tired of Starlo. Starlo had nothing going on outside of just being wow. there to tell the player what to do. If she had like a backstory, <laughs> uh, like if she came from Star Haven, like from Paper Mario or something, I would be more interested in her. But they just don't. She, do she right. did basically serve as the bro voice for the bros. Yeah. And she's, she's not a character right. of herself, really. Like she's sassy, but that's really all you can say about her. <laughs> Speaking speaking of the voices of the bros, bring back the gibberish, please. Yes. Please I, make sure they keep the gibberish. That's so important. I hope it's there, but my gut feeling is already, I don't think it's going to be there. I think they've gotten rid of the gibberish, which is a, such a shame. Because the gibberish is that? one of the most charming. Just because of the conversation between them, where they're actually talking. It's like, well, Luigi and... Oh, know, no, no, I love them, but what makes you think they're not going to come back? Like, it's not going to come back. I, don't, I just, ju just a general feel. It's like... I, I, okay. I don't know. It just feels like they're going to go a bit more, I don't know, expressive with them, despite how many, okay. how many people love the, how much people love the gibberish. But we also haven't seen, had a scene where they're just talking to each other, where it just becomes the gibberish. That could, it could be there. It could totally be there. And I hope it is, but I, yeah. I, I'm afraid it's the gone. It's also worth noting that like, that's an improv thing that Charles Martinet specifically had talent. You know, doing. that's a good point. Um, yeah. Which is not to disparage Kevin Afghani. We just never heard him do it. Um, right. And that would be a lot of pressure to put on him if he doesn't typically do improv type stuff. Because uh, doing fake Italian is really easy to sound bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and also to correct myself from earlier, I, I actually think the partner character is Snoutlet. Connie is a different character, but uh, as, one, as one of our live audience members uh, pointed out, Squire, I, yes, Snoutlet is such a goaded name. I great. love the stupid electricity outlet puns and theming mm. of this game. The, like, the full extension gang, what do they call it? The they extension the core. Something? The ex oh, it's that's so good. I missed that. Good. That's good. Oh, yeah, no, it's so good. It's oh so man, good. I and that probably plays into the the little outlet on the the battle. Yeah, screen. the extension core is yeah. so good, <laughs> and and he's saying full extension with that crazy pose. Oh yeah. my god, this I love the weirdo characters in Mario and Luigi, and they they've definitely knocked mm -hmm. it out of the park. And yeah, we've barely even seen any of it yet. I, I, just to have another sort of mild concern for the game. I I, I I'll try to confirm with Ash, but. Does the music feel Shimamura to you? Because for me, it doesn't right. really. So I was going to bring that up. Yeah, I, I I go back and forth. I feel like the first half of the trailer sounds a little bit more like her, and then the second half doesn't. And I feel like it's weird because, you know, the, the Mario Luigi series has only had one composer up to now, and that is the GOAT, Yoko Shimamura. But you'd also think that because that's true, if she was on this one as well, she probably just would have confirmed it on Twitter after the the game was announced because it's certainly enough people asked if she was coming back and she hasn't said anything so i'm but, kind of starting to think maybe she she's not back for this one which i can't imagine nintendo wouldn't have asked her but you know she's probably busy with multiple other projects including kingdom hearts 4 but that's going to be a bit of not not to say that the soundtrack can't still be great if it's not her but it's just she's left her mark on this franchise so much that a mario luigi game without her style of music is just going to feel a little weird. I think it's Maybe also Maybe she'll worth have a noting, few guest tracks. Yeah. It's also worth noting that Nintendo has been very cagey about what developers are developing games, and True. maybe that extends mm -hmm. to composers as well. There can be a variety of reasons that they want to do that, and right. I respect the decision, because you know, there could be some unwarranted harassment towards certain companies. Uh, mm -hmm. Like the game might come out from a company who doesn't have the greatest track record and it could be excellent and they just want to avoid that. Um, right. Not that Yoko would have any issue with that at all. It's just... Right, but it's just an all-encompassing policy because yeah. it, it really does feel like Nintendo almost wants to convey until the game comes out that this is just a Nintendo game. It's made by Nintendo. The people who are working mm -hmm. for us are Nintendo. Obviously, we can only hope that they're bringing her back just because, again, it's really been her her series in terms of the music since the beginning so it certainly would be strange for them not to bring her back and uh you know we should i don't think we should read too much into things either way yet but yeah it's certainly far from confirmed what else has stood out for you guys like concerns uh stuff you're excited about like how, how are you feeling or even just in comparison to again we're talking about how this feels like a throwback to superstar saga 
what other connections have you noticed? I like the the little mini games you play with Mario and Luigi. Uh, there's one where they're like, I think they're like hitting, were they flowers? With yeah. Their hammers? Like yeah. Uh, that's just literally the mini game from Bowser's Inside Story where they're hitting the the energy balls at Bowser's muscles from the inside. It's the same oh, thing. Oh right. Um, I also like the little bit where they are they're wall jumping together. Uh, that just feels right out of Superstar Saga for me. Like when they're walking up the uh, the pipes to underwater by going back to back and then climbing up with their feet. I know those are like little things in the grand scheme, but I love the ways that they make the brothers work together to traverse the environment. And I'm glad to see that that is still here um, and an important part of the gameplay. Agreed. And I, I think just, you know, as I go back through it, I'm just, you know, kind of flipping through the trailer right now. The thing that just keeps getting me over and over again is the animation quality like just the way they move the way they move and animate like they're you're playing a cartoon almost which is again what you you know maybe had in your mind's eye when you were playing superstar saga back on the gba but that was just different hardware and now we're seeing it's like a playable cartoon almost the way they move and it's just so expressive and attractive and i'm just so into into the just look they're going for with this game yeah, it's got a great cell shaded look. This is going to be a game that will look good forever. Um, yeah, yeah. And we need that. <laughs> Nintendo's always good <laughs> at that. Um, but I think it's an even stronger statement here. Uh, there's a crispness to the video quality that uh, I haven't seen in a lot of Switch games lately. Um, that might just be because it's less demanding than some other games that Nintendo has put out, which is fine. Um, but it is nice to see that the Switch, despite being as old as it is, can pump out games that look this good <laughs> yeah yeah you just get that style I, just right and it, it it nails it and i it's it's funny to think about the tropes of mario and luigi it's like which will, will they keep these in here or will they get rid of them uh i saw uh, the the um audience oh the uh, azran uh in the audience mentioned will the beans be back because that's been a common thing <laughs> with all the beans right. being there um could we have a coffee shop so we can have some cameos like the old days? Uh, that'd be fun to start having cameos like that. Uh, will Bowser be possessed and be our final boss or some oh version of the final boss? Again. <laughs> uh, again. Yeah, right. Will that, will that be a thing? Um, will, uh, I mean, I think a fun thing would that would be really fun in non-canon, just sort of super boss, extra boss type of way, bring back the final bosses of the previous Mario and Luigi games and make them make them just like super bosses, extra bosses. Just have the characters in 3D. Like here's Cacletta. Here's final form of Fawful. Here's final form of uh, the the Shrew uh, uh, Princess, and so forth. I think that'd be fun to just bring back old villains yeah. and have them be, you know, extra challenges. It'd be great. And think of the, the series has never really had a chance to celebrate itself. Uh, that's true. The one time it has is in Bowser's Inside Story, which uh, has a continuing plot thread from the first game. Um, without getting too deep into that, but so I'd love to see that happen in Brothership. Um, if it, even if, like you said, it's just extra super bosses at the end, that'd be great. Cacletta's final boss fight in the original game, in mm. specifically in the original version of the game, is brutal. <laughs> mm. It is actually, yeah. <laughs> and we, and and just think of the remastered final boss music we'd get if that did come to fruition, oh, especially man. from Bowser's mm. Inside Story and Dream Team. Yeah. Oh man, that would be that would be crazy cool. I'd yeah, I'm just, that. I'm just really, uh, really so excited that just the more I watch the trailer and the more I think about it and just the more that, that we're just getting a new Mario Luigi game in, in the year 2024. Um, I just, I think I just kind of accepted it as potential fact or an, an, an inevitability that the, the series died along with Alpha Dream. And I'm just so thankful it didn't. And good on Nintendo for keeping a lot of those employees on. Despite shuttering the company themselves, they just yeah. rolled a lot of the employees into other positions. Also, so bold, like incredibly bold to release three Mario RPGs when they've, one, been dormant for so long, um, and two, this close together. Like, what reality are we living in that this is happening? Every six months, th three times in a row, we've gotten a new Mario RPG. And that's sort of perfect timing, because that's all you really need. Like, you, you will have these games beat in that amount of time. Like. They're they're not long games, which is nice. They're they're 
fun bite-sized RPGs. And that, you know, that is one thing that I, uh, and, and I think all three of us here are pretty big Dream Team fans. I, you know, I know I am for sure, but that is one thing that I hope they have learned from Dream Team is just to cut down on the fat and cut down on the bloat. Yes. And, like yeah. make the tutorials optional. Yes. Again, I adore Dream Team, honestly, but it, it's about 10 to 15 hours it's too long. Too long. long. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So you, definitely. You, yeah. You, you feel it after a while. Um, I, the, now, based on Paper Jam, they definitely learned the lesson about tutorials. Uh, right. Pacing, mm -hmm. I don't know because I never finished Paper Jam. But same, I couldn't. I, it I was think so um, boring. I think another element that made Dream Team so long is that, uh, as for as for as cute as some of the dreamy sequences could be, they went on for a long time. A long time. And being yeah, stuck did. on a two D plane, repeatedly fighting the same enemies over and over again, solving puzzles that really aren't that interesting. Um, that added a lot of bloat to the experience in addition to the, all the tutorials and whatnot. Mm -hmm. um, so not having that uh, is also a plus in my mind for Brothership. Yeah, for sure. yeah. Uh, That said, I do have a bone to pick. One big, one big bone to pick. And uh, that's that there's seemingly no co-op play, which is uh, baffling to me. That is honestly shocking to me. I, I almost thought that was... Just a given, a, a shoe in, a given. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When uh, when Mario and Luigi first came out, uh, and it's like its title sequence plays, it shows the Game Game Boy Player as a logo. Like they wanted you to play this on the Game Boy Player, and one of the mm. things you could do on the Game Boy Player was every single controller port to control the game. So you could plug in a second GameCube controller and play Mario and Luigi two player. Um, that had to have been intentional. So the fact that we finally have a home console version and there's just seemingly no co-op at all, uh, that's why. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, that is stinks. so shocking to me. Yeah. All I want is the second player to be able to press the B button. That's all I'm asking for. <laughs> yeah, that's all we really need is just that. And then they, they have control whenever Luigi's in front. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, that would be so fun to be able to play this game with a partner, like literally a partner, and, and just play through this game co-op. It's, I mean, I, I can vouch. A lot of people don't realize this, but the original Super Nintendo version of Final Fantasy VI actually had co-op. You could set in the options menu each character to either, each character in the party to either the first or the second controller, and that's how I introduced my wife to Final Fantasy. We played through FF6 literally co-op together, and it was so fun. And to be able to do that in this game would be, would have been perfect. Now I guess I guess I should for nine as well. Yeah, not they, yeah they brought it back for nine and then took it out of all the re-released versions of nine like on Steam and why? Steam. Wait, really? I didn't know, <laughs> I know that. Yeah, yeah, it's they took dumb. it back out. Yeah, it. I can't say with certainty that it doesn't have co-op. It's just I think it was the UK store page um, that said they, it was. They mentioned one, one player only. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That could change. Um, I'm not counting on it though. So, I'm, I'm maybe I'm, they'll just allow you to have two controllers plugged in. It's technically still single player, but that second player has access to the buttons as well, and you sort of just have a gentleman's agreement to like. It says one a, player on. B. It says one player on the USC shop page as well. It feels but like you know, this would be an yeah. easy free update. Um, but, you know, and, who am I to talk? I'm not a developer. <laughs> you know, and I mean, this could also be something where that that's one of the things they're kind of holding back for another True. beefier trailer. And they can all easily amend the eShop pages. True. Yeah. Uh, honestly, co-op is the only thing that they could add to what we've seen already that would make this a perfect game for me. Um, mm -hmm. It'd just be fun to sit on the couch, play, play this with Michaela, um, you know, giving the second player only the responsibility of pressing a single button makes it easier for, you know, younger players to play alongside you, or less experienced players, I should say. Um, mm -hmm. So I, I think that would just be a great option. It's also, this is the Switch. Handing a person a Joy-Con is the entire concept outside of handheld right. play. So, I don't mm -hmm. know, it just seems weird. <laughs> Agreed. It is quite odd, but, oh well. Um, I don't know. Uh, any other thoughts we want to get out there about Brothership uh, before we wrap things up? 
The only thing I'd say is I wonder if maybe we might see some sort of, like, ship-based combat since we're sailing the high seas, right? Like, I wonder, you know, uh, we were talking about it, you know, going possibly in Wind Waker's direction at some point. I don't think there will necess necessarily be that much sailing from island to island, but I do wonder if there will be encounters out on the open sea and if maybe there will be some sort of, like, alternate combat system while you're out on the ocean, like, ship-based combat, you know, kind of like we saw the giant, Lu like, Dream Luigi combat and Dream Team, Papercraft that battles. sort of thing. Yeah, some sort of, yeah, it's like in, instead of the, the giant battles, maybe shit battles or something like that. Maybe, but them in minigames, I mean, I guess we got the paper mache battles in Sticker Star, and for the remakes, those we, two, got all those, we got those army battles, but we didn't really do much. So right. I guess they could add that, but honestly... Doesn't need it. Yeah, I prefer just to stick with them. Yeah the core yeah. concept or expand upon the core concept in the in the in the vein of a ship uh based battle i guess if it's if it's not a yeah. fully featured system um i, I don't want it <laughs> like uh -huh. i like totally the, the big castle battles and even the giant luigi battles in uh previous paper or mario and luigi games but they were very light on mechanics and mostly just mm -hmm. spectacle and after you've done it once they kind of just wear thin um, especially the papercraft battles in Paper Jam. They were just incredibly long and boring. Yep, agreed. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I would uh, I would approach that one with caution. <laughs> Same. I, I, I am in full agreement with both of you. I, I, you know, I don't think they need it. And if they do it, I want it to be something that's really well thought out and not just kind of tacked on. It's like, hey, here's something different that you can do, even though there's not much mechanical depth to it. If it's just the final battle that has a battleship phase that they do one time just for the end that's yeah. fine mm -hmm. <laughs> right i don't need to do it seven yeah. times with art mm -hmm. without any difference <laughs> yeah uh before we actually fully wrap things up I i'm gonna ask you a challenge what's one crazy thing you'd want to see in this game before we uh wario and waluigi <laughs> wario and waluigi okay i want them what to be the... a team rocket type set up where they just show up occasionally uh like like uh uh pop what's his name popple or who's the thief in oh. superstar saga oh, oh yeah um I, it might have been right it might have been popple it's been a, a while not, that not guy popple. in and rookie um popple and rookie yeah uh, rookie, i would love yeah. them to just take that role where they just show up occasionally to cause chaos but they really have no stake in the plot uh i think that would just be funny Waluigi wants attention, okay. Wario wants the money. <laughs> <laughs> and then you fight them, and then they can use bro moves and stuff, just like Mario and Luigi. I think that'd be cool. Yeah. What about you, Ash? Uh, you know me. I, you know, I, I, I love a good bit of chaos. And uh, with the original, or with the uh, recent Super Mario RPG remake, just putting a potential sequel on the minds of everybody yet, you know, yet again, Geno cameo, man. Superstar Saga had that Geno cameo, and it, it, you know, never really faded from the collective consciousness of Mario and Luigi fans. So, just throw a random ass Geno cameo in there, and just to get people thinking and wondering even more, <laughs> just just to throw that little bit of chaos in there. You had, the... or you know what, Daniel, I agree with you. A Mallow cameo instead. I would rather have a Mallow cameo. I agree with you. You have uh, all the EGAD cameos in the original game at the at the cafe. Yeah. Uh, let's have another cafe system and. It's all Mallow this time. <laughs> it's all Mallow. All about it. <laughs> all about it. Welcome to the fluffy uh, cloud. I'm Mallow. How, what can I make for you? <laughs> Perfect. I like it. Um, so we have a ship. We're going from island to island. And Mario and Luigi likes to do callbacks. Like it was, it blew my mind when I first played Superstar Saga because it was the first time that the Koopalings were reintroduced in a mm -hmm. long time, and I was that was I was literally giddy as a kid because super mario brothers was so cool and just like actually refighting them um i want to go to sarasa land oh yeah, man. that would be sick that would I be th amazing. i think a callback where the desert area or some sort of special area is sarasa land hell yeah let's do this yep exploding koopa troopas and all kinds of weird stuff <laughs> <laughs> and just daisy being in the game period yeah yeah, yeah. That'd be fun. That would be awesome. I would love that. It would be kind of interesting if all like the tertiary characters like Peach, Bowser, Wario, and Waluigi, if they're there, just had like a Luigi 
uh, like equivalent, so that mm -hmm. you could do bros battles with everyone. Like imagine a bros battle between Mario, Luigi, and Peach and Daisy. Uh, that would be cool. I think there's a lot That'd of fun, fun stuff you could do with that. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I think if you're gonna have a gimmick, have it be that which you can swap between bros or give it a, like a, a Sonic Advance three thing where you can just have different team ups. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. That'd be a, that. that'd be a fun way to I guess expand it for another sequel. I don't know if they're gonna do it for this one, but that'd be a fun one to just like what what's the team makeup if you have Luigi and Peach or Mario and Daisy or Luigi and whatever you know. Call it Mario uh, and Luigi be... Supreme Team. There oh, you go. that's so good. Uh, I like it. I that, like that it. That sells itself. That's so good. <laughs> <laughs> Mario and Luigi Double Date. That's that's a good one, too. Oh, that's good, Squire. too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's I great. I like that. That's the fun part about Mario and Luigi. There's always a lot of potential. So that's. I think that's why we're so excited for Brothership. This is a fun yeah. return to form, a nice way to get things rebalanced, restarted, uh, reset, and let's, let's, let's set sail for new adventure. <laughs> Hell yeah, time. I'm ready. November cannot come soon enough. Mm -hmm. Seriously. But for now, I think that covers it for our uh, thoughts on Mario and Luigi Brothership. Thank you all for watching. And if you enjoyed this video, please consider supporting us on Patreon at patreon.com slash gvgaming. But even just subscribing to the channel and ringing that bell helps us a ton. Uh, and of course, hey, we have all these lovely people in the live audience. By joining the Patreon, you get to join them for these discussions as well. Uh, we're trying to make that a much more common thing, so uh, keep an eye out for that. Otherwise, until next time, bye. See ya. Bye. All right, Daniel. Uh, Daniel. <laughs> Daniel. Even better. Even better. Uh... Ha, 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 ha.